What's up, everybody? It's 9 o'clock, or almost 9 o'clock, maybe a few more seconds here. Uh, we're going to get started here in a second. Um, I was very disorganized this this evening and forgot to boot up my system. So let me get that booted up and cut over, and then we'll get started here in a brief second. All right, there we go. Hey, everybody. Um, so this will probably be a fairly short stream. What's going on here? Come on. There we go. Uh, because we are on the third act of Snatcher, it probably won't take too particularly long to complete this. Um, the third act is maybe an hour and a half. It's mostly story. Um, the, the final gun sequence is kind of difficult but it's not a very long act by any means so we'll see how, how far it gets and we if, if it's a quick night we'll, we'll just we'll break there because i don't have anything else planned so yeah i think it's this one the last time I wasn't quite sure if this was going to end up playing, saving the start of the third act uh, cutscene, or if I was going to skip over that. I guess we'll see. Because I let it play last time, and then I'm like, oh, we got we to gotta call a night. With the start of this year's killing, okay, so it's going to start restart Act Three. That's fine. The delegates from the participating countries are beginning to arrive at the conference center. A major poll of domestic and international opinion carried out just last week shows that the vast majority of respondents favor a complete quarantine of Neo Kobe as a means to combat the risk of the snatcher menace. Now that the chief's death has been confirmed, it won't be long before they strip us of our junker authorization. They will be deciding how to handle Neo Kobe at the summit in just three hours. There are rumors that they're going to use nukes on the city to make sure the Snatchers are wiped out. That's ridiculous. Come on, this is the 21st century. That may not be as improbable as it seems. The world's leaders are extremely concerned about the Snatcher problem. The chief was going to calm this hysteria in his speech at the summit, but that'll never happen now. Three months ago, government pressure on Junker operations increased dramatically. Gillian's transfer here was really our last chance. Our own chief was snatched. It's not too surprising they don't want to trust us anymore. I've heard that the Army and FBI are going to take over operations now. That's correct. That, too, will be officially decided in three hours' time. Three hours, eh? Is there any way we can find their hideout in that time? If we don't, we and everybody else in this city are finished. As far as they're concerned, we're just like a cancerous tumor that has to be cut out. We have to hit the Snatcher's headquarters before then. Gillian, can you do it? If we only knew where it was, I should be able to manage something. Hitting their outposts like Queen's Hospital won't do any good. We have to find their main nerve center. What about the memory of that Snatcher who was impersonating the Chief? Just like the others, it was completely blanked. It's a form of self-destruct mechanism that they use. Wait a minute. Mental, what about tracing that video phone call from Jamie? It was no good. The call didn't last long enough. Still, it definitely did come from within the city. Damn. Where are they hiding? Gillian, can't you remember anything at all? Didn't Jamie say something that implied you were somehow connected to the Snatchers? Nothing. I can't remember a damn thing. Metal, I want you to tell me everything you know about me. Why was I sent to Junker headquarters? Where did I come from? Uh, Gillian. Metal, the Chief's dead. Tell me everything you know about me. Well, uh, you see... Metal! <laughs> All right. With the Chief gone, you are the highest ranking officer here. You knew all along? Of course. Where were we rescued from? Three years ago, 
you and Jamie were taken into protective custody in the Siberian neutral zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. More precisely, you were discovered in cryogenic sleep pods in an underground bunker near Moscow. Cryogenic sleep pods? You mean they were frozen? This is a photograph of this the is a Kojima game. Things are going to get no really convoluted very there. quickly in this in third addition, act. The third pod was empty at the time you were discovered. There were three pods? You were revived and taken into custody by the army. Apparently, as a result of the extended sleep, both of you suffered from complete amnesia. However, another theory suggests your memories may have been intentionally erased. This is the only piece of evidence found at the site. That's Harry's picture from when he was a kid. Shocking reveals. Harry is Gillian and Jamie's son. It's been confirmed by DNA tests. Harry? Harry was my son? Using the information gained from the photo, it was established that you are Gillian Seed and your wife, Jamie Lorraine. Both of you are American citizens, born in the late 1960s. The 1960s? In addition, both of you vanished without a trace in 1989. There is no other information available about you after that. 1989? Yes. You come from a world that's been gone for 50 years. But what does that have to do with the Snatchers? When the 17th Special Investigative Force was bringing the two of you out, there was an accident. Though the two of you were all right, most of the 17th was killed. One of them was a Snatcher. Of course, before their departure... I don't know if I would classify that as an accident. Examinations. So, if one of them was snatched... It had to be somewhere in Siberia, right? That's correct. And in order to attempt to determine the origin of the Snatcher, as well as your true identities, you were assigned to Junker Headquarters. The hope was that exposure to the Snatchers would help you regain your memories. Moscow? 50 years ago? Almost everyone who was in Moscow at the time was killed in the catastrophe. So Gillian and Jamie are the only living witnesses? Harry. Harry was my son. Did he know? No. It was highly classified information. He was never told. I... I was never able to do anything for him. Wait a minute, Gillian. Didn't Jamie say something about taking a boy hostage? That's right. They must know about Harry and are using him to threaten her. We have to find their headquarters quickly. We've only got three hours. Gillian, let's think this all through again. We may get some kind of a hint out of it. You're right. There may be some clue in the way they're operating. All right. Let's go over what we know about them. All right. What is their weak point? Yes, their artificial skin is very unstable. They only come out at night in the middle of winter and wear sunscreen even then. Yes, yes. It's a method uh, Jean used to figure out what the snatches are up to. Turns out the destruction of the ozone layer had actually actually had a benefit for us humans. Context, the the holes in the ozone was a big deal back when this game came out too. I don't know if it still is. I know global warming is a thing, but I don't know if they really talk about ozone holes anymore. Maybe they do. But that was a really big deal back in the early 90s and 80s, as I recall. Uh, yes, they were using an underpass as a method of movement.
It was Snow Nine. Sneezing was caused by the presence of the allergen Snow Nine. Artificial pollen developed by the military. Interfere with radio transmissions. Somewhere near the Ina River. Probably somewhere near the uh Yes, okay. Accessible to the tube liner near the Ina River. You must not forget the three photographs the snatchers were found with. All of them were related to the Soviet Union before the catastrophe. Heh. <laughs> Homesick. Well, yeah, it's Moscow. This is the easiest quiz ever. Give some image an emotional base. So Moscow is their creator in their home in the place that uh, they found Jamie and I. Words. This homing instinct thing of theirs has led them to set up their headquarters in some place that reminds them of home or their creator. What part of this city is like Moscow? Moscow's really cold, right? They get a lot of snow, don't they? Snow? No snow has been recorded in Neo Kobe in several years. Well, then that's not it. Wait, what about that pollen? That crystal bioengineered stuff, Snow 9? Now that you mention it, wasn't it snowing on Jamie's video phone call? That's right. Their hideout has to be somewhere close to the Ina River. The Ina River flows for miles around here, Gillian. We could never search it all in time. Gillian, let's look at a map of the areas investigated so far. This is an enlarged view of the southwest portion of the city around the Ina River. This blue area is that in which Snow 9 is present. Now I'll superimpose a chart of the abandoned tube liner tunnels. From this, we can establish those areas with Snow 9, which are accessible by subway tunnel. Damn. Nice well, that... try, but it's still too large. We could never cover it in three hours. Don't give up so fast, Gillian. What about that image of home thing we were talking about? Maybe there's some kind of geographic similarity. Maybe the same view can be seen or something. I'll display a map of Moscow alongside. Hmm. What's this? Look, the rivers are exactly the same shape. This is the Moscow River over here. Yep. It looks like we're on the Very right similar. Track, Metal. Show us the location that Jamie and I were picked up from. All right, right here. Metal, before the catastrophe, what was at this location? The headquarters for the entire Soviet Union, the Kremlin. The Kremlin? That Snatcher said something about taking Jamie to their Kremlin. Metal, what spot in Neo Kobe would match up with the location of Moscow's Kremlin? Calculating. This is the spot. It's presently occupied by an old church. It's rather large, but reports indicate it's been abandoned for nearly 20 years. And it's right Sounds in like the a good of place as any. Subway area. That's it. That's their headquarters. Their new Kremlin. Gillian, let's go. Wait, Gillian. I want to go with you. Sorry, Mika. Hey, I'm a junker too, you know. I know, and you're a great one at that. So take me with you then. You head to the summit to warn the delegates. They haven't given up, you know. The summit's in Kyoto. I'm not going to be the only one to run. You've got to convince them not to use nukes on Neo Kobe. We found their hideout. There's no need now to sink the whole island. Yes, but... It's a tough job. Can you do it? Okay, Gillian. I'll do what I can. Thanks. Thank you, Mika. Don't say it, okay? Let's go, Gillian. Gillian? Yes? Um... Uh... 
What's wrong? How about dinner sometime? Dinner? Yeah, you know, dinner. Hmm. Mika. Not interested. I thought it would be nice, you know, to kick back, relax. It's Christmas after all. Christmas, huh? I'll be back by then. Gillian, we have to hurry. That's a promise, right? I heard Gillian's you. got more important yeah. things than saving okay. the city. But I gotta go to church first. I'll see you soon hmm. then. Okay, Metal, let's go. Throughout this whole game, Gillian's been a player. Uh, let's see, this is the last turbo steel. Okay. We know where we're going. Input the map data on the Kremlin's locations. Lift off. Flight configuration. Now gaining altitude. Jamie, please be safe. Gillian, please keep in mind that we're working with a strict time limit. A 50 year debt in three hours. Snow! Snow 9, to be specific. We've entered the Snow 9 region. Please put on your breathing filter. Direct inhalation is dangerous. All right. Radio transmissions will also be impossible from this point on. Understood? Now descending. Conversion to hover configuration complete. Gillian, we've arrived. All right, here we go. Yeah, it does kind of look like the Kremlin in a way. All right, let's save. Of course, we're going to finish this game. Building is about 50 years old, but appears very well maintained. Where's the entrance? Front side of the building. Yes. Yeah, we can see that. Uh, sensor scan reveals that the tube liner tunnel passes directly underneath this area. Well, that's no surprise. Looks like we got the right place. All right. Now opening the door. What's wrong? Won't open? I've scanned it, and it's not locked. It is probably rusted into place. Not surprising. After all, our friends always go in and out through the basement. Let's push it together. All right. One, two, three. That got it. There's nobody home. It would appear to be the, some kind of a chapel for the Snatchers. Are you telling me those things pray? To whom? No doubt to their creator. That portrait on the wall is probably a representation of him. This person is no doubt the one the Snatchers worship as their creator. Religious robots. This is rather interesting. This guy, it's ra that, isn't that random? Da -da 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 -da. Random, for those that missed it, is the bounty hunter that died in the last episode, or the last act. Uh, one moment, I'll compare the picture with my data on random. The fa facial bone structure of the individual in the portrait is nearly identical to that of random. A positive identification is impossible, as the picture is not a photograph. It just looks too much like him to be a coincidence. 
I haven't posted published that video on YouTube yet. I'm, I'm way behind on uploads. But that one will be uploaded probably this weekend, along with this one. Uh, let's see. Uh, something is written on the painting. The creator, Modnar. Remember, doesn't that look familiar? Modnar, random, random, Modnar. I know, I know the answer to this already, but I'm just gonna play with you all a little bit. Uh, the one that the statue was talking about, huh? Appears to be a portrait of that person. Yes. All very organized, almost inhumanely so. Hmm, there is another room farther back. Let's move to the back room. That's a lot of Snatchers. Look at them all. I'm not picking up ener any energy readings. They are all deactivated in some kind of suspension mode. This is their warehouse. There must be a few hundred of them here. They continue all the way back. Still, this doesn't look like a factory to me. Alright, let's go ahead and save, just to be safe. Needs to be a number of containers stacked up in the back of the room. Some type of a label here. 23rd Siberian Investigative Force. The Investigative Force? It would appear to be those these snatchers were brought into Neo Kobe from the Siberian Neutral Zone. It seems that the investigative forces have been have been responsible for shipping the snatchers. In other words, the investigative forces have been snatched just like they found us. Just like when they found us. Uh these are endoskeleton or endo structures which have yet to have their artificial skin installed. The bone sizing devices and skull slits are all still set into the smallest sizes. So their victims haven't been chosen yet. They're all just waiting for their turn. None of these snatchers appear damaged. All they need is their energy packs. The gender units have yet to be installed, however. Uh, let's see. Investigate the area. Do not see any tools or equipment for maintaining anything in the area. This room would appear to just be a storage area. I see. So the Siberian investigative forces bring the Snatchers out of Siberia and into storage here. I think you're right, Metal. And then the Snatchers just wait here in storage to be reactivated and adjusted after their victims are selected. A rather efficient system. I wonder where the actual snatching takes place. The back of this of this room may hold the answer to that question. I really like those footsteps with the dark screen. It kind of adds to the ambiance of what's going on right now. Oh my. The Snatcher's culturing room. The mechanism is operating. Alright, I'm saving for each room because I know what's coming. And... It's... We could get a game over if I'm not careful, so I don't want to repeat too much of this. Let's 
see here. This may turn out to be the last time we ever save anything. Yes, we're going to complete the game. All right. Gillian, there are Snatchers with their artificial skin already installed here. This is where they fuse the artificial skin onto the Snatcher's endostructure. First, they adjust the size of the still skinless Snatcher to the size of the individual who is to be snatched. The Snatcher's overall shape and size can be adjusted by expansion or contraction of sizing rods. Their sex is controlled by gender units, which are installed at this point. Then, the face is modified to match the intended victim by adjusting the size of the upper and lower jaw, cheekbones, temporal bones, and tooth alignment. Just like Gibson said, that means there are limits to the size of the people that they can snatch. That's right. The limits of the mechanism mean that they can't snatch children, the elderly, or people who are very tall or heavy. And this is where the artificial muscles attach. Is it organic? No. It appears to be coated with a type of plastic gel capable of mechanical response. Like human muscles, it creates mechanical energy through chemical reactions. And this is where the artificial skin is attached. In order to prevent the synthetic cells, developed using biotechnological protein design techniques, from rejecting the inorganic material below, they attach it gradually over a number of days. And this is the stuff that gets cancer if they stay out in the sun too long. Finally, they attach body and scalp hair. The process involves transplant of synthetic hair follicles as well, so the hair will grow back if it's lost. What about scars or birthmarks? It would appear that they make those adjustments at this point in the process, as they would for wrinkles to simulate age. Things are getting creepy. Pure terminal is installed in each preservation cylinder. The whole area is, is protected as a clean room. There is a door at the far end of the room. Alright. Uh, it's a small metal door with a doorknob attached. It's locked, but I should be able to open it from this side. The cylinders are used. Yes, I think we did that already. Um, now the power is on. Look at this, Gillian. The, the data of people to be snatched is already being neatly processed. So this is where the whole thing begins. The endostructures arrive here from the Kremlin. Then they convert them into copies of their victims. And finally, they head out into the city using the old subway system. With artificial skin maintenance being handled at Queen's Hospital. But who's behind all this? Gillian, look at this. There are some finished snatchers over here. Get a load of this. The U.S. president, the prime ministers of Japan, and the U.K. Gillian, you're in here too. <laughs> ah. They were looking to snatch every VIP at the summit. And the last junker, you. It definitely looks like they plan on moving out beyond Neo Kobe. If they were to snatch every major world leader, they'd practically be able to control the planet. Still, that's odd. With their flawed skin, pulling something off like that would really be difficult. Chin said they had found the key to developing a perfect artificial skin. Maybe they've already produced it. No idea. But the number of snatchers here makes it clear that they're up to something new. Gillian, this is definitely their nest. We should destroy everything. Not yet. Not until we found Jamie. Uh, Metal, uh, how much time do we have left? The summit should have begun by now. We don't have much time. And once our legal privileges are suspended, I won't be able to help. In fact, I'll be forced to restrain you. I know, <laughs> I know. If the military wants to avoid nukes and goes for a surgical strike on this facility, uh, what would they likely use? Probably a phased particle beam from one of the attack satellites. A phased particle beam, huh? That'll wipe this complex right off the map. Everything, including the soil, will simply evaporate. The attack will leave just a large crater. 
Metal, can you convince them to give me another hour? Even 30 minutes will help. Understood. I'll try my best. And I'll try to find and rescue Jamie in that time. I can't transmit here due to interference from the Snow Nine. I'll have to leave the area and then send the message. All right. Do it, Metal. Gillian, don't forget. 30 minutes. You must get out before then. I understand. Gillian, I'm sorry I couldn't help you better. Don't worry about it. I'll be able to move faster by myself anyway. 30 minutes should be plenty. Go, Metal. Yes, sir. Don't forget. 30 minutes. Thirty minutes? Oh, this is gonna be tight. That room's the only place left to check. Let's take a look. Here we go. Ah! Ah, I'm gonna die. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh that's so t so intense. That. They almost got me. <sighs> All right, uh, let's open the next door. Oh boy, I hope I don't have to do that again. Doesn't look like there's anything here. Whoa! Oh, that's some a lot easier. Jeez, these guys are tough. Of course, I didn't exactly expect them to welcome me with open arms. Okay. That was intense. Like next door. Very. The white. These uh, gun sequences really kind of get the blood pumping. Ah. Jamie, are you all right? Gillian, you came for me. Are you hurt? No, they won't lay a finger on me. Not until the new artificial skin is completed anyway. Artificial skin research? You? Gillian, I've got my memory back. All of it. What happened? Tell me, Jamie. They said they'd kill him. They said they'd kill Harry. They forced me. I had to help them with the skin development. They said I had to help them because the professor was ill. Wasn't getting any better. Gillian, the engineer Harry, he's our son. He's been living on his own now for 50 years. Jamie, I'm afraid that Harry's... There was nothing I could do. They forced me. But I can't do it anymore. Jamie! The professor... He just died. He was over a hundred. The professor? What? This old man? Dun, 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 dun. Don't you remember? It's Professor Modner. 
Professor Petrovich Modner. What? This old man is Modner? He's been confined here for three years now, just to develop the Snatcher's artificial skin. Terrible. Doing that to your own father. Whose father? Jamie, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You really can't remember, can you? Jamie, tell me. Tell me who I am. Uh, what were we doing at the Kremlin? Are you sure you really want me to, Gillian? It's all so awful, but if you must know, I'll tell you. Try to this is like calm, a 30 okay? minute cutscene, by the way, so I'm going to be quiet for most of it. Ago, you and I were involved in a top secret Soviet project. It was still during the time of the Cold War. The gulf between East and West was as wide as ever. Everybody Would not be a Hideo Kojima you. game without a 30 minute cutscene. point, the world's armies were at their largest ever. Leaders still believed that a strong military meant a strong nation. There were rumors that there would be an agreement to end the production of nuclear weapons. On the other hand, the major powers like the U.S. began to get involved in a space weapons race. But not the Soviets. The conservative despots in the Kremlin had another, completely different idea for gaining military superiority. A horrible plan, something no one else would think of. At that time, the countries of the communist bloc were facing an economic crisis. Popular movements pushing for democracy were springing up all over. Communism itself was facing extinction. Facing pressure from the reformers, the Kremlin began to panic. And that's when that horrible, childish plan was launched. And that was the Snatcher Project. Replace your enemy's leaders with puppets of your own. Then you control their governments, their economies, take over a country from the inside out. That's right, Gillian. And to develop these robots, they assembled some of the most brilliant scientific minds from around the world. Some of them were even brought in against their will. At the crux of that development effort was a group called the Frankenstein Project Team. You and I were members of that team, Gillian. It was a four-person team led by the late Professor Modner here. The robotics expert was Professor Modner himself. His son, Elijah Modner, handled genetics and microbiology. For nanobiology and picobiology, myself. And for behavioral science and psychology, you, Gillian. Early development was carried out at a lab in Novosibirsk, but was later moved to a secret facility under the Kremlin. At the time, the Glasnost and Perestroika movements were gaining momentum, and they rightly feared for the existence of the program if it should become known. But some of the reformers did learn of the project, and they conspired with the U.S. to block it. Gillian, you were a CIA special agent sent by the United States to infiltrate and sabotage the project. I was the plot CIA. thickens. Yes, and the government knows that. That's why you were assigned to the Junker team. What? Who am I? Work on the project continued to go smoothly. But then, on June 6, 1996, there was that accident. A mysterious explosion at the Chernobyl facility spread a bacterial weapon that was under development there into the atmosphere, destroying the country and the project. Killian, was it you? Did you set off that explosion? What? You can't be serious. You think I caused the catastrophe? Somehow, during the confusion, Professor Modner and our son, Harry, managed to get picked up by American agents. But we couldn't get out in time, you and I and Elijah. In a shelter below the Kremlin, we entered a cryogenic sleep. Our plan was to sleep there until the toxic effects of the bacteria were safely passed. Okay, and plot hole time. I, later, they said he'd been ago, in cryo since 1989, not 1996 earlier. Yes, but when they found us, Elijah's pod was already empty. Elijah Modner? That guy whose picture was in the church? The one that looks like random? That's right, Elijah is alive! Elijah is here and working on the Snatchers. Why don't you let me finish your little story? Da -da 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 -da. Who's there? It's been a while, hasn't it, Jamie? Ah, yes. And Gillian.
It's me, Jamie. Elijah? Is that really you? Random? No. Not quite. So, you remember me, do you? I am Elijah Modnar, the only son of Professor Petrovich Modnar. I'm afraid I've grown somewhat old and feeble since we last met, however. Elijah, why are you doing this? Your father, Professor Modnar, he just... He passed away a few minutes ago. What? My father? My father is dead? Elijah, what... What happened to you? The Elijah I knew could never do anything like this. I've changed, Jamie. These 40 years have changed me. I can't believe it. What happened to you? What happened to me? Jamie, do I actually have to explain it to you? Jamie, it's you. Your beauty is the cause of all that has come to pass here. Fifty-seven years ago, I was obsessed. With my research, yes. And with you, Jamie. At the time, I was still young, having just graduated with my genetic The exposition. Degree. My father's connections got me on the team, and there, I met you. You were working as my father's assistant. Your beauty, your smile, I was stricken. I saw something in you that I never felt with women of my own country. You warmed my cold, young heart, Jamie. You opened me up, and I couldn't stop my feelings. Elijah. Oh, I was so happy. The political situation was crumbling around us, but every day was a joy. I gained my father's trust, and with you there watching over me, I was able to work as hard as I ever have on the project. However, my happiness did not last for long. Gillian, it was you. You showed up and all was ruined. You arrived and joined our project team. Far from home, Jamie found comfort in a man from the same land. Your relationship grew quickly, and all I could do was stand by and watch. Jamie and Gillian fell in love, were joined, and even had a child. Harry. Even then, my feelings for you only grew stronger. Worried about me, my father tried to have me removed from the project, but I persisted. So is this whole story just Jamie, about jilted, a jilted lover at this point? You. And then, the democratic movements that had consumed the rest of the Eastern Bloc spread to our country as well. The Cold War was over. The hardliners who had pushed for its development were stripped of power and the project was cancelled. The reformers, trying to cover up the existence of such a crazed project, ordered that all materials related to it be destroyed and that we stand trial for our actions. Jamie and Gillian were to be returned to their homeland that's about the time that I learned that you, Gillian, that you were a CIA agent and that you were trying to pass documents on our research to your military. The country had sold us out. I'm no politician. I couldn't care less about what happened to the country. All I cared about was my research and Jamie. And I was to lose all of that, everything. For someone so young, you cannot understand how great of a shock that was. Elijah. That is when I decided I swore I would see that secret crazed project through to the end. At the time, the Bioroids were 80% finished. The main part, their endostructure, was essentially completed. But we still were having trouble with the artificial skin. The area that Jamie and I were assigned to. We called it artificial skin, but there was of course no need to duplicate T lymphocytes, Langerhan cells, or endocrine cells. All we needed was keratinized cells and melanocytes to provide the pigment. With the artificial protein development techniques that we had in those days, 
Full-scale synthetic cell development was very difficult. Research like this took months, years. The original project called for us to simultaneously snatch an entire country. In other words, a whole nation or an entire city had to be snatched over the course of one night. For that reason, a powerful biological agent which could quickly and effectively kill the population of a country was being simultaneously developed. Lucifer, Lucifer Alpha. Alpha. That's right. A type RAO-11 virus which another team was developing. For someone like myself, who was closely involved in the project, blowing up the lab was quite a simple task. So he My did God, it. Elijah, do you know what you're saying? That explosion killed half the world's population. I moved all the materials and records essential to the Bioroid project into the shelter and executed my plan on June 6th. After sealing off the lab, I brought the two of you with me to the underground shelter and we entered a cryogenic sleep. But not before I programmed an atmospheric research satellite to transmit a wake signal when the danger from Lucifer Alpha had passed. And 10 years later, Lucifer Alpha naturally mutated into a non-toxic form. But the automatic revival system failed to work. Oh no, 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 it worked. Just as planned, it revived me 10 years later. A little sooner than the two of you, of course. But even though you sealed the lab with the explosion and everything, you should have been exposed. Why weren't you? Oh, I was. But by that time, the vaccine L Angels had already been developed. So everything went just as you planned it then? Yes, up until that point. But my real struggle was yet to come. My original plan was to revive Jamie as well, and for the two of us to finish the development of the Bioroids. You, Gillian, you were to stay asleep forever. But I just <laughs> couldn't bring myself to do it. Not after looking at Jamie's peaceful face there in the pod. Besides, I could never have convinced her to work with me on the project anyway. I knew the time was not yet right, so I changed the timers of your pods to permanent on. How? How could you do such a thing? And so for the next 40 years, I worked alone in that cold and lonely room under the Kremlin trying to complete the artificial skin for the Snatchers. For days and days, no one would visit me. I never saw the sun or felt the changing of the seasons. Still, I always had Jamie by my side. You were always there for me to talk to. Just you and I for 40 years in that dark cellar. Oh, you poor, poor man. And then, three years ago, my research was finally completed. First, I snatched the Siberian Special Investigative Forces to establish a transport route for the Snatchers. And then, to test the effect of large-scale Snatch operations, I chose Neokobe City to be my experimental sample. Neokobe is cut off from the surrounding areas, a sort of miniature country in itself, making it a perfect test site. And since it's a melting pot of various races, it would also allow me to gather extensive data on snatcher modification and operational techniques. In addition, the element of suspicion or mistrust... Yeah, this cutscene just Japanese goes on and on and on. Chose this site. But your test revealed a critical flaw in your machine's artificial skin. Yes, quite unexpected, I'm afraid. All my research for 40 years... I gathered data and worked day and night to find a solution, but nothing seemed to work. So that's why you decided to bring Professor Modner here, right? That's correct. I discovered my father in one of the government's hospitals. He was old, but still very sound of mind. Naturally, he would not cooperate with me. Of course not. He'd never become involved in something like that. So, unable to receive his assistance, I decided that I had to have yours but a mistake on my part allowed both you and gillian to be taken into custody by the authorities first just what are you trying to accomplish elijah 
You must know you can never get Jamie back. I'm only interested in discovering what I can of the human animal. In the past, it was because of Jamie. My motive is different now. It sounds like you're just suffering from the wild arrogance that corrupts so many scientists. Humans are such weak creatures. No matter how much they trust one another, the tiniest speck of suspicion can destroy it all. Look at how the Snatcher problem has caused such wild unrest. No matter how much science advances or how high we set our ideals, we eventually begin to suspect each other, to hate each other, and then to kill each other. The Snatchers are nothing more than a tool for bringing out this reaction. I am simply using the Snatchers to elicit the true nature of the human animal. I think this experiment has shown me the limits of human society. I sincerely doubt it will be able to reach any greater level of prosperity on its own. If human society ever hopes to reach greater heights, what is needed is an absolute leader, a firm ruler who isn't affected by these trivial episodes of mistrust. You're crazy if you think people would ever obey snatchers. Of course they wouldn't. But if they don't know, they cannot object. There has been a time in every age that the people have longed for a god to lead them. As long as they give the people no reason to suspect them, then they can easily become their gods, indeed, a new race of super-beings. We are almost there. Once we perfect the artificial skin, Snatchers will transcend man to become this planet's true human beings. But you'll never get your perfect skin now. Professor Modner is dead. I no longer have any use for my father. I have a sample of the new skin. That's cold. Developed. Once I've analyzed it, I'll be able to make as much as I need. Or if need be, we could simply culture the keratinized cells, epithelial cells, and melanocytes in the quantities that we need. I understood what some of those words. About? How could you get a sample of perfected artificial skin? Why don't you take a look at this? We found this in the rubble of Queen's Hospital. Dun. It's random. Random? Oh, an acquaintance of yours? He's... he's a snatcher? That term isn't exactly accurate. This bioroid was constructed by my father without my knowledge. He modeled it after me in my youth. He built it right here in this facility. And not only that, he programmed it to destroy Snatchers. This bioroid caused me serious difficulties. It's designed and built far better than my Snatchers. The machine itself thought it was human. My father input memories for it all the way back to childhood. Those two were apparently mine. Haven't you yet realized? Random Hajil is Elijah Modner spelled backwards. Ta da! How like my father, silly old man. He did virtually overnight what I could not do in 40 years of effort. Furthermore, he makes a bioroid so perfect, even the bioroid itself believes itself to be real. What's more, the cells of the skin he developed are self-replicating. Once in place, no further transplants or culturing is necessary. Is he dead? Its main and locomotive systems are completely shut down. It's just scrap now. But the artificial skin is being kept alive. This we need. With this, we can move to phase two of our plan of full-scale infiltration of the world's major nations. The summit's already over. You'll never succeed. What does the summit matter? Nothing holds us back now that we have this perfect skin. We can go anywhere we want, and there will be no way to tell us apart. I will have free control over the world. Nothing will be able to stop me. Politics and free thought will no longer have any meaning. My will alone will decide the course of human history. 
you, egomaniac. Do you think you can snatch the entire population? There's a fully automated snatcher factory under the Kremlin. Even as we speak, scores of new snatchers are being born. But no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to snatch the people's heart and soul. What do you hope to gain from this anyway? Jamie, the human race is composed of fools. But I, I am different. I will be its savior. Indeed, no, you are the biggest fool. Of mankind, but of all life on the planet. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Metal! In ten minutes, this church will be struck by a phased particle beam. I am guiding the beam from the attack satellite using GPS and 15 navigational satellites. The beam cannot miss. Everything in a two to three... That satellite looks a lot like Akira, destroyed. the satellite in Akira. Stop this foolishness now. I will not have my research destroyed by some souped-up pocket calculator. <laughs> now, what happened at the summit? The delegates, worried about the Snatcher menace, voted unanimously to allow the use of nuclear weapons on the city. The military Ooh. is presently imposing a quarantine on Neo Kobe. What? Do they intend to kill everybody? The populace is in a state of panic. However, they have agreed to lift the quarantine if this church is struck by the phased particle beam. This is our last chance. I will handle things here. Gillian, Jamie, you two must flee! You insignificant mass of metal, you'll never... One move and I detonate! Gillian, run! Metal, this is crazy! We can't let a single snatcher get out of here! And this new artificial skin has to be destroyed as well! I will not allow some talking scrap pile to get away with this. <laughs> if you were the aiming point for the beam, then I'll just have you thrown out of here. Grab this little one and take him out of here. No, no. They're all activating. You always were a real pain in the butt. What's that? <laughs> that face. What? How did... You're supposed to be deactivated. I don't go down that easy, old man. Stop this foolish... <sighs> Shut up! Let's try to make our final moments peaceful, shall we? And you snatchers, you touch the little guy and the old man's head comes off! Random! I've always hated being used. Why don't you watch the final act with me? Gillian, you only have five minutes. The turbo cycle is just outside on standby. Use that to flee! Let me go. I'm Elijah Modner. I'm your original. I don't care if I'm an original or a copy or what. You and I are gonna die right here. If we both die, there won't be a copy anymore now, will there? The stupid logic of a simpleton. Of a machine. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's my will. Machines have no will. Machines cannot sacrifice themselves. We'll see about that. You have four minutes! You must go! And don't forget to take care of the factory under the Kremlin! Stop! Gillian, even if these memories in my head are fiction... Yeah, I know what you mean. Our memories of our time together are all too real, Random. Gillian, you've become one hell of a junker. Gillian, it has been most recreational being your partner. Oh, metal! If you can, try to pick up the pieces for me, okay? Like we did for <laughs> Little John? Little John? Oh! Okay, Metal. Hurry! You only have three minutes! Thanks! Thanks, you two! Jamie, come on! No! Don't let her 
go. No. You pathetic old fool. You don't even know how to love someone. You stupid machine. What is that idiotic grin supposed to mean? By snatching you, I'm finally gonna get my real self back. Random. There's less than one minute to go. Thanks to you, everything will be fine. You don't owe me any thanks. Sorry to get you involved in such a big job. You did great. You're a hell of a junker. Three, two, one, here it comes! Later, kid! Wait, did they just blow up the whole city? I thought that was supposed to be more targeted than that. So you're really going, aren't you? It's our responsibility, too. Besides, if I go to Moscow, I may get some of my memory back. And if that happens, I'll be able to love you even more than I do now. Wait for me. I want to be with you, but first I've got to destroy this terrible factory of theirs. Jamie, when I get back, let's try living together again. What do you say? be waiting for you too katrina mika you're here too you better be happy buster with all these beautiful women seeing you off i'm happy you came uh uh let me introduce my my wife jamie seed i suppose it's a little odd introducing myself a second time though what do you mean uh you've never met them before have you what are you talking about gillian we're good friends huh uh since when it's the first time I've met her in person, but I've spoken with her on the video phone a lot of times. What? Have you guys been talking about me behind my back? Alright, so... Oh. My controller went to sleep. The cutscene was so long, my controller went to sleep. All right, uh, I'm supposed to... Uh, we're supposed to talk to all characters a few times. Ha! <laughs> Gillian the player. Alice is the dog, by the way. Alice the dog was killed uh, a couple of episodes ago. care if you get your memory back or not. Why? Because getting your memory back will mean that you'll remember those things about me that you hated. <laughs> things that I hated. What are you talking about? Dealing with each other's imperfections is part of what being married is all about. Uh, Gillian, don't worry. No memories will change how I feel about it. I should have been reading these earlier. Oh, well. Um, uh, thank you, Gillian. It's good to hear you say that. And that's the game. Final cutscene time. So they finalize what they're going to do about Junker operations? I suppose this will end up being our last mission, huh? Well, originally they were planning on disbanding the team, but now they've decided to keep us in business. So that means... That's right. We've been designated as one of the government's special police divisions. 
That puts us above the regular cops. So the government has decided that crime by machines poses a bigger threat than crime by humans from here on out, huh? They've chosen the new chief, too. So when you get back, you'll get to meet the new head honcho. Well, it's comforting to know I've got a place I can come back to. Colonel Seed. Now it's Colonel Seed, huh? Whatever you do, just come home safe, okay? When you get back from this job, you still have a dinner date to keep with me, you know. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't forget my promises to either of you. Whoops, oh, almost forgot. Of course, I'll want to spend some private moments with my wife, too, huh? Uh, uh, what's wrong, Jamie? Harry and I will be waiting for you to get home. That's Harry's hat. We can do it this time, Gillian. Not some fake couple like before, but with love and trust. I know, Jamie. Take care, Gillian. I'll see you, Jamie. Wait! Wait for me! Take me with you, please! <laughs> you? Metal? Metal is a Sega CD, in case... That needs explaining. Everybody. Just call me Metal Gear. Sega CD for now. <laughs> so on your memory chip in one piece, eh? Random protected it from the In other versions of the game, Metal Gear Random, or Metal huh? is a Saturn, a PlayStation, a Turbo Graphics CD, etc. They change this by the before. by the version of the game. Really? and get on board, partner. Yes, sir, Gillian. Off into the sunset they go. Throughout history, suspicion has always bred conflict. The real conflict, though, resides in people's hearts. This conflict has just begun. Okay. Credits time. So, uh, that's Snatcher. Uh, fantastic game. The final look at the box. Um, I mean, I've played this a lot of, a few times in the past since I've, since I picked it up. It's, I really like it. It's amazing what they're able to get away with. Um, again, this this game originally came out in the 80s, and this version of it is 1994. Um, the themes at play in this game uh, are much more mature than really most of gaming at the time. Other than like the, the, the weird, silly, like porn games that came out on the Atari uh, 2600, uh, but those really weren't they were, didn't really deal with mature themes like this. And I'm still amazed by the fact that it's got only a T rating. Um, it, it did not get an M rating. I would probably say they got away with a lot for it being just a T rating. Uh, there's lots of gore. There's not much language, but there's lots of sexual themes um, and things of that nature. So it, it really is kind of surprising to me that they were able to get away with what they did. Um, but the, the, the art is terrific. The, the, um, the soundtrack is terrific. I do like the story. It kind of gets along, especially at the end. Um, lots of exposition, etc. cetera. Um, it is, in, in some ways, it is very much a product of its time. Uh, 
you know, treatment of women and things like that. Um, but it doesn't necessarily detract from the quality of the game. Um, what else can I say about it? The the light gu uh, the action sequences are fun. I, as you saw in this stream, uh, the final couple of sequences are very intense. Um, probably as intense as any other light gun game out there. And those sequences are just not uh, three by three, you know, square. So it's 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 very it's very well done. And I can only imagine what those are like with an actual light gun, which you can use. Uh, it does support the Konami Justifier, uh, but I don't have one, and I couldn't use it on an LCD screen anyway. Um, so controller it is but um what else can i say about it I, the pixel art in this game is fantastic uh the the pixel artists the the pixel the animators like they did a fantastic job with this um yeah i mean it's a terrific game i don't know if i'd recommend buy it, rushing out and trying to find a copy on ebay though this is a very expensive game now i think it's like 500 dollars or something crazy like that um don't play it for that price uh but the sega cd has no copyright protection just saying um i'll leave it at that uh find a way to play it this is the only version you can play that's in english um sadly too this game kind of did end on a cliffhanger um i think they probably expected to do a sequel to this from what I've read, the original version of this was envisioned as a six-act story, and they only did three acts. And the third act only appears in this version and later, from my understanding. So, like, the Sega CD version, the PlayStation version, and the Saturn version. The earlier versions only had two acts, and that means there is basically no resolution. Uh, so this whole act that we play today doesn't happen. And that... I'm glad we got it. There's not really a whole lot to it um, compared with the other acts, which are much longer. Um, and then there's a lot more to do. This one's fairly straightforward. Or this one was fairly straightforward. But, um, yeah. I mean, what, what else can I say? Uh, I, I recommend it. F try and find a way to play it. Uh, this is the version you want because it's the only version that's in Engl English. Um, Thank you to Hideo Kojima and team for making this fantastic game. Uh, I'm glad it exists. And maybe someday we'll get a sequel and see where the story goes. You never know. Is it? Did it freeze right there at the end? No, it actually wants me to hit the start button to end the credits. Okay. So, uh, like I mentioned, this is gonna this is gonna end as a relatively short stream. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna end it there. Um, next week, uh, I will be doing. Saturn will be streaming some Saturn stuff because Retrobit sent me the new uh, black and white controllers um, that I'm very that I really do like like this is the white one um, the buttons on these feel great I'm probably not gonna play with this one too much just because the white I, I always am afraid of white controllers because they tend to show grime and stuff after a while uh, but this one will probably be used for like multiplayer and stuff when I have like people over um, the other one that I did, the other one they sent me, the black one, is got a detail that I don't think a lot of people no notice on it. Maybe they do, but they got the Saturn logo, which it basically makes it exactly like the original Saturn controllers here in the U.S. The other ones just say Sega on it, which is m more akin to what the Japanese versions did. Um, only the US ones had that Saturn logo on it from my understanding uh, so I'm very happy that they decided to add that little detail rather than just put Sega on the, on the top there like they could have very easily um, 
but this one will probably be my preferred. I've got a few others. I've got some of the slate ones that got the pink butt bumpers and the colored buttons and things. Um, but this one's probably going to be my preferred just because this is exactly like the original US uh, Model 2 Saturn controller. Um, and again, the, the buttons on these just feel fantastic. Um, it's, it's a perfect repli replication of the original controllers. The, the other thing I want to note, these buttons, they, they do just, they feel much better than the slate buttons for some reason. I don't know why, but that's kind of my, my little mini review of these. These, this is what I'll be using for next week. But, um, without, without any other delays, um, I hope everybody has a great weekend, um, has a safe weekend. And I'll see you all uh, next Friday for some Sega Saturn. But until then, have a good night and later.